Hey there, good morning. It's seven o'clock on Friday, August the 27th, 2021. We've made it to Friday. Um, I'm excited about that. I'm sure you're probably excited about that too. Looking forward to a restful weekend. Um, kind of um, relax and get caught up on some things. You know how we do on the weekends. Let us know as you come in. Let us know you're here. Alright. If you have the opportunity and think about it today about 11 o'clock, uh, remember me in prayer. I'm having some oral surgery done about 11 o'clock this morning, so um, just a little anxious about it, but I know that it'll be good. I've got a great doctor. Um, so please remember me this morning about 11 if you can. All right, there's Kim, my sister, Wilma. There's Connie and Terry. Good morning to everybody. So today we're in Revelation chapter 12, uh, ending our week um, past the midpoint of Revelation. So next week we're going to be in 13 through 17, and in the following week, will be in 18 through 22. So we'll actually literally in Revelations two weeks from today. Um, so let's have a word of prayer and then we'll jump in. There's my mom and Kim. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning. I just pray that you would be with us in our midst this morning. You tell us that you will be. And so we acknowledge you, Lord, that you are here with us, <clears throat> that you would speak to our hearts and our minds and let us understand your scripture a little bit better. Lord, thank you for your cross. Lord, we want to lift up all the families of those servicemen and women who lost their lives in Afghanistan yesterday. Lord, we want to lift up our leadership, our generals, and our president to make good decisions about um, that, that place and our presence there and kind of the next steps there. Lord, we know that History is unfolding in front of our very eyes, and Lord, help us to persevere and to stay the course and to do the things that you have called us to do as your children. Lord, we love you, and we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. Well, let's get started. Revelation chapter 12. So, <clears throat> chapters 12 and 13 are interesting because they unveil three very important characters in this narrative. It's important for us to always realize that these are real events. These are not fairy tales or fables or some weird story. This is real. This is whatever we see here will happen. All right? So that's important. The timeline, we don't know, okay? We don't know. Some of the things may have already occurred. Some of the things may be occurring now. Some of the things may be occurring in the future, okay? Several of them will obviously be taking place in the future. But, you know, we have our, <clears throat> in Christian theology, we have the Trinity, right? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Here in chapters 12 and 13, we get to see the unholy, wicked version of that. We see Satan, we see the Antichrist, and we see the Antichrist's prophet. And we'll see that begin to unfold today. We will be introduced to one of them. Um, and so let's read. Chapter 12 starts out, verse 1. Then I witnessed in heaven an event of great significance. I saw a woman clothed with the sun, with a moon beneath her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant, and she cried out because of her labor pains and the agony of giving birth. Who is this woman? Everything I have read tells me this is a symbol of the nation of Israel. That she... This, you see that she is wearing a crown of 12 stars on her head. What does that symbolize? The 12 tribes of Israel. 
She is giving birth. Who is her child? Let's read on. We'll learn more. It says, Then I witnessed in heaven another significant event. So now we have two events. I saw a large red dragon with seven heads and ten horns with seven crowns on his heads. His tail swept away one-third of the stars in the sky, and he threw them to the earth. He stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth, ready to devour her baby as soon as it was born. Who is the dragon? Red symbolizes blood. Red symbolizes murder and destruction and evil. This is Satan. Lucifer. The devil. He is symbolized here as this dragon with a hideous configuration with multiple heads and multiple horns on the heads and crowns on the heads. <clears throat> Who is the baby? The baby is Christ. The baby is Jesus himself. Look back throughout the story of Christ's life and even before. Satan took did everything he could do to influence un, unholy people. Think about Herod. You know, when Herod, when Jesus was born, Herod issued the decree that all male babies under the age of three be killed. That was Satan's doing. Okay? There were so many times, so many stories where, G, where Jesus um, was attacked and was in danger because of Satan. But we know that he really never was in danger, right? Because he is God. So what does it mean when it says his tail swept away one-third of the stars in the sky? Well, we know this. Satan was at one point an angel, one of the greatest of the angels. And because of his rebellion against God and wanting to be God, he was cast out of heaven and taking with him one-third of all the angels in heaven who became his demons. And so here we see that. We see that his tail swept away one-third of the stars in the sky. The stars are the fallen angels. And he stands ready to devour the baby as soon as it's born. Verse 5. She gave birth to a son who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. And her child was snatched away from the dragon and was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where God had prepared a place to care for her for 1260 days. A lot of times, um, things like the nation of Israel, other huge entities like that were symbolized by women. Okay. And we're not really sure what, what, what he means when he says this, but I would encourage you to go back. If you want more prophecy, if you want more end times, if you want more information about that, go and read the book of Daniel. There's a lot of parallels between these scriptures and those that you find in the book of Daniel. There's a lot of connections there. Okay, So it says, The baby was snatched up, away from the dragon, was caught up to God in his throne. So, literally, literally, between verses 5 and, uh, actually, all within verse 5, Jesus lived his entire life and was ascended to heaven, okay? There's a lot that happens there in verse 5. It says he was born, and then he was caught up into heaven, okay? Where will Israel go for 1260 days and be hidden away from the dragon, right? That's a question. A lot of Bible scholars and theologians talk about this city, this hidden city called Petra that you'll find in Jordan um, that people say that Jewish people are already beginning to store things away there in Petra for this time. Again, not really sure. Speculation. But these things are going to happen just as sure as you and I are here today. All right, Let's move on. Verse 7 talks about a war that occurred, that will occur in heaven. Okay, look what it says. Then there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels. Now, Michael is one of the good guys. Okay, He's one of the most powerful angels in heaven. We only really know two angels by name other than Lucifer. We know Michael and we know Gabriel. So there's a huge war. Michael is an archangel. He's one of the biggest, baddest, toughest, good angels that there is. 
And he says, And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and his angels and the dragon lost the battle, and he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole earth, was thrown down to the earth with all of his angels. Do you know there's nothing that gives Satan more joy than destroying you and me and our families and our churches and our nation and the entire kingdom of God? He, he that's, that's the thing. He uses people to do that. So we see that he's a deceiver. He's a liar. And even in the life of believers, we cannot give him any foothold. All right? And it says, This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown out down to the earth with all of his angels. Verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens, It has come at last, salvation and power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters, that's Satan, he is the accuser, has been thrown down on earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. That's an interesting verse because it seems to tell us here that Satan is in God's ear saying, look at her, me and you, look at, look at them, he's accusing us. He says, and they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb. There's victory in Jesus and by their testimony. Why is your testimony so powerful? We see it here. No one can argue with the fact of what God has done in your life. It's so personal. No one can, no one can, can ever argue with your personal testimony. And that's, our, that's one of our greatest weapons in, in witnessing and evangelism and telling others about Christ is you can say, you know how I know he lives? He lives in my heart. I know that. He's changed me. And they did not love their lives so much that they were ready, that they were not afraid, that they were afraid to die. You know, ultimately, the only thing that the enemy can do to us is kill us because there's really nothing else he can do. And Jesus conquered death, right? It says, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who live in the heavens rejoice. But terror will come on the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. This story is coming to a head. This battle, this rebellion is coming to a head, and Jesus will stand victorious. He's already victorious, but he's going to ultimately put everything in its place at the end of all of this. When the dragon realized that he had been thrown down to the earth. He pursued the woman who'd given birth to the male child. He's targeting Israel in these latter days. He's targeting God's chosen people. But she was given two wings like those of a great eagle so she could fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness. Remember that place. We don't know where it is. People think it might be Petra. Who knows? But for 1260 days, the nation of Israel will be safe there from the dragon. There she be cared for and protected from the dragon for a time, times, and half a time. What does that mean? I don't know. Okay, That's one of those things we just have to, I don't know what that means. Just read up on it. I would encourage you to go read up on this stuff. Go find other smarter people than me because there's uh, literally everybody smarter than me. So go find some commentaries, some different things online. Now be careful because there's some stuff online that will steer you in the wrong direction. You can't believe everyone who has a Bible scholar next to their name, okay? Because <laughs> you don't want to be taken in the wrong way. Then the dragon tried to drown the woman with a flood of water that flowed from his mouth, but the earth helped her by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that gushed out from the mouth of the dragon. And the dragon was angry at the woman and declared war against the rest of her children, all who keep God's commandments and maintain their testimony for Jesus. Who are her children? Well, obviously the Jewish people, right? And most people think that, the, that, that you and I are lumped into that group because we were grafted in. The Apostle Paul, for example, he was the guy that took the message of the gospel to the Gentiles. We know that we're under attack by Satan. Then the dragon took his stand on the shore beside the sea. And that's it. Okay? I wish you could read more. This story is so interesting and so incredibly 
uh, profoundly tough to understand sometimes. I mean, it's, but it's good because we know how the story ends. My question to you as you read this, I don't know how anyone could read Revelation and not come to Christ because this is coming. These horrifying events, this judgment is coming. This war is coming. The Antichrist, his prophet, will come. It is for sure. Satan will declare war against Israel in the final days. The two witnesses will come. The seals will be opened. The trumpets will sound. Do you know Christ? Have you given your heart to him? I'm not talking about just praying some prayer. I'm talking about have you genuinely repented of your sins and trusted in Christ to be your substitute, to be your Savior, to take upon him your sins and my sins and give our lives to him, to believe in him and to trust in him and to let him be the Lord of our lives. Something is the Lord of your life. Is it you? Is it me? Is it our jobs, our family, our hobbies, our own ambitions and resumes? Or is it the one who created you? Is it the one who loves you more than you could ever understand? He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. If you have any questions about that or any, if you just stumbled upon this crazy video and want to know what's this guy doing at 7 o'clock in the morning talking about this stuff, message me and I would love to talk more. Um, I'll help you. We'll figure it out together because God wants that. God wants a relationship with you. So I uh, hope you have a great Friday, a great weekend. I love you all. Let's pray together and then we'll be gone. All right? Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your goodness and mercy and grace. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you help us understand it and see that the only safe place is in you. Lord, bless these people. We love you. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, y'all. Have a great day. And uh, we'll see you Monday. We'll see you Monday, Revelation 13.